Nope. Well, what I'm up to now is I am literally I was in the process of transferring some stuff from my computer to my hard drive to make some space and then I came across a lot of this footage that we were doing before a lot of stuff with Nima and Kirill and Luisa and Anna and I, the, the last few weeks of the show anyhow like footage that I haven't put in like parts of the conversation that I didn't use so I think instead of like putting away to storage somewhere and hoping it gets used sometime in the future why not just go ahead and use it now? Like I found some footage of Nima talking about playing at Bergheim. I found some uh, some footage of Kirill explaining why he left Israel. Um, Louisa talking about her sexuality and her polyamorous lifestyle. Um, Anna and Anna, they got a really nice, excuse me. <laughs> uh, I got a really nice quote from Anna and Anna. Yeah, they, explain how, what happened with Sfai, they already got the name Sfai from and all this stuff. So yeah, I think it'd be some interesting things that I either didn't have time to put in the last episode or uh, either maybe I felt like I was talking too much so I didn't put it in then or whatever maybe. There lots of different reasons why things don't make it into the, to the final cut. But yeah, that's what I'm up to now. Trying to make something out of a lot of things. Trying to make something out of, yeah, all this great footage that we have. So it'll be like a, let's see, one, two, three, it's like four interviews, parts of four interviews combined into one episode. Four episodes, what are we at? 18? Episode 18 of the 5T Vodcast. Wow. Techno and talk on Tuesdays and Thursdays with Ty. Don't forget it. Put it in your mind. All right, so you want to see what we're working on now? Yeah. All right. I think I'm going to start off with, with Kira. Uh, since you moved to Sweden, what's your impression of Stockholm? Like, why did you come here in the first place? Uh, yeah, I come here in the first place because um, I didn't want to grow up. I didn't, not grow up, I didn't want my kids to grow up in the society in Israel, uh, which I grew up in, okay? Again, I'm not cheating on Israel because the people there, I have the best friends there, okay? One of the best people that I know in my entire life are there. But the whole mess that is going on mm. there. You know, like, <clears throat> for example, uh, when they shoot rockets from Gaza or mm. any other place, there is a siren. Mm. And then after siren, you know, you have to hide, go hide somewhere in a shelter or uh, under some <laughs> brick or whatever. Mm. Then you hear boom, you know, in the end of the siren. So yeah. the rocket fell. Yeah. Kids getting traumatized from the age of two and three, of they course. already understand what it is and they cry and they're scared and they're influencing their development in the future. Of okay. Mm. I don't want my kid to go through that. Mm. I want my kid to have a happy uh, uh, as much as happy as he can. As much innocence in childhood as exactly. possible. Exactly, I want to drag his innocence a bit more yeah. and not to tell him in the age of three, listen, there is some folks that don't like us, so they're shooting rockets. Like, no, you know. Uh, and the, the, the socio situation there, social situation with hate between Arabs, Jews, religious Jews, non-religious Jews, Russian Jews, Moroccan Jews, these Jews, these Jews, um, too much. It was too much. I felt like I'm in the pressure uh, room, you know, in a pressure place that where it's just pressure and pressure and pressure. So my wife had a, a have a Swedish passport. So I said, we said like, let's let's go and try in Sweden for a while. Okay. Let's just chill from all that, you know. Yeah. And we came here. Stockholm is an amazing place. Um, very humane, much more calm. Uh, but dude, what's up with the fast food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everywhere you go is fucking hamburgers and hot dogs. Yeah, that's it. Like, come on, guys. For real. In Israel, the fast food is just. Uh, I get f five kilos more. When I'm <laughs> it's insane. Bro, I grew up in the states. That's like the home of fast food. Yeah. And if to take this subject serious, yeah. Mm. Uh, in Stockholm, like, it blew my mind how I am as Israeli person that served in the army and that have all this, um, 
brainwashed beliefs, you know, uh, that Arabs are bad for Jews and all mm. that. Let's talk about it again, the same guy, Anthony, yeah, mm. the, the goddamn Anthony. He's from Lebanon mm. and he didn't give a flying fuck that I'm from Israel. Mm. Mm. He booked me for parties, he booked other Israeli DJs that are in Stockholm also for oh. parties. He, we booked uh, uh, two DJs from Israel, like, and I never thought that I'm gonna make, or, or my Iranian friend, Armin Sky Vibes, mm. yeah, Armin, shoot out, uh, like, who thought I'm gonna have Iranian friend? Mm -hmm. Who gonna? Who thought ever I'm gonna have Lebanese friend? Mm -hmm. So that opened my mind a lot. That opened my mind that it's all politics, neto. Those people are wonderful people. They respect the fact that I'm Jewish. I respect the fact mm -hmm. uh, that they fr came from where they came, Iran, mm -hmm. Lebanon, and we coexist. Yeah. And we help each other. And we play together. And we send music to each other. And support. Why it can happen in another place? It's crazy. I think personally, like my ideas about like Israel and all this side stuff, there's so much history, there's so much death. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How do you tell that person whose mother got killed or father got killed or child got killed that they should kind of, you know, okay, for this, for the for the good of everybody, we should drop this, or you should kind of forget about it and try to make peace. It's hard when it becomes on a personal level. Yeah, you know what course. I mean? I, 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 you know, I, in some ways, understand what the, why it keeps on going. Because when you take it down to the personal level, granted, as a government, if you are a leader of a country, it's almost your job to kind of go above the people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To say, okay, guys, I understand your mother's dead or your child is dead or whatever it may be. But for the greater good of us all, we have to kind of find peace somehow. But like you said, both sides, the, the government is too right wing. They're too angry. They have too, too angry. much, too much evil or too much bad history, too much bad vibes, too much bad feelings towards each other. It's almost impossible for them to get over it at this point. So let me ask you that question. Yeah. Okay. Bad history, bad blood, uh, memories from Israelis fly to Berlin. It's like their favorite place. Yeah. Crazy, right? Like when the Holocaust, Holocaust was what? 80 years ago? 70 years ago, man? Why you want to go back there? Because people grew up from, from uh, you know, it, it was in the past. Yeah. They regret it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the whole world regretted it. Okay. Yeah. Let's move on. Okay? I agree. Actually, there is a huge immigration of Israelis to Berlin. Fantastic. You, you know? Yeah. So it's like. Uh, if we overcome six million deaths of Holocaust, we can overcome uh, Palestinian uh, Israeli conflict. Brilliant. That's an excellent way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I never really looked at it like that. That's, uh, that's true. I think it's all money. Mm -hmm. It's all about the power, money, politics. Again, if you put people away from their comfort zone and where they live in this mm -hmm. fucking, sorry, cube, mm -hmm. okay, of opinions and. and uh, if you take them away and you put them in a neutral country like Sweden, mm. we can get along. Okay. All right, so we're back. Yes. Uh, interesting conversation off camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but let's talk about that then, if you yeah, don't mind. Of course. Uh, you said that you're a kinky person. What, do you, what does that mean to you? What does that mean? Well, a lot. I think, like, I'm not going to go too deep, but um, I would say, like, before I separated from my ex, I was very, like, I saw that when we did separate, that I, I felt that I was holding myself back a lot. And I had a lot of, like, I felt a lot of stuff like inside of myself that then, back then, felt wrong. But today I know it's the right thing. So, like, I would. I'm gonna keep it simple, but back then I was uh, living in a monogamy like relationship. But today I know I'm polyamorous and also uh, I'm bisexual. Or mostly like pansexual. I go. <laughs> I, Where the like, inspiration comes. Yeah, yeah, like I get attracted by a person, and 
and the sex often doesn't like I mean sometimes it does it does matter but most of the time it's a person I go up to so and yeah so it's been like uh, it's been a journey for me uh, since that breakup um, with ups and downs but I learned a lot about myself and I'm very like proud and comfortable with my sexuality today and where I'm at and I love to have a partner that I can evolve with and uh, still have such a like a relationship that is so like safe and it's uh, we really trust each other and it's uh, it's a love on another level that I've never experienced and I, like I think I I've, I've, I thought that I knew love before but I know love today like uh, in another way and that's yeah it's fantastic yeah I completely understand what you mean yeah because for me it's like, I also feel the same, I also feel like when I was younger I fought against certain things in my, let's say my nature, mm -hmm. you know there's certain things where it's just like I felt like my, my body and my soul in some ways was pushing me towards certain things, Yeah. but they weren't like let's say socially acceptable maybe, so mm -hmm. I had to find the right partner and mm -hmm. the right, first of all the right confidence within myself, Yeah. to feel like I'm not a bad person for feeling like this. Exactly. And then secondly, finding someone that understood that yeah. and can appreciate it. Yeah. And luckily, I also feel like I have a really good partner who supports me in those things. Mm. And is also willing to grow with me and mm. we evolve in that direction yeah. as much as we can. That's, uh, yeah. It's a blessing. Like yeah, you said, it though, it's love in a whole nother way. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because when I was younger, like to me, I saw sort of a lot of love that was based on possession. Mm. That was based on you're mine. Mm. I I have you. You do what I say, or you do, or we do what's, you know, the what's expected in in a, yeah, in a yeah. very simple way. Mm. I think when you evolve beyond that, when you become like, when you trust each other, when you have faith in each other, when you enjoy the other person's enjoyment, yeah. that's a whole completely that's bigger one. definition of love, in my opinion. Definitely, it's yeah. another level. I mean, I find it hard that people live in regular. Well, I shouldn't say that. The world's different, everybody's different, they can, people <laughs> can live have whatever life that they want to live, but yeah. But at the same time, it's, mm. I often like think that, are we, are we really meant to spend life the way we are taught? Like, uh, of course, everybody's different, but are we really? Are we like, uh, are we supposed to have just one partner and stick to them like our whole life? Uh, I mean, if you look at the divorce rate in the world, it kind of doesn't mm -hmm. say that. No. You know <laughs> what I mean? So. And people do things behind their partner's backs and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, I think society has put certain requirements on us, certain yes. expectations yeah. on us. And a lot of people Definitely. go through their lives trying to reach those requirements. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're supposed to get married, you're supposed to have that. What is it? 2.3 kids or so whatever it is. Yeah. Now. Get the Volvo and the house and the countryside and grow old and die. That's totally you know? stressing me out just to think of like the life would be just that. No. Uh, no. Yeah, no, nope, not for me. I completely understand. Yeah. But that took me maybe, I think I was maybe in my 30s before mm -hmm. I, I, I was comfortable with that side of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's a challenge. Completely. Yeah, it's. Uh, because you're fighting against these like all the things you've been taught what is normal and what you should do and should be and how life is supposed to go and yeah but when you're like so when you when i started to like question that it was like at the beginning it was hard and i, I felt wrong but then when i met the right people the right people but yeah it was the right people for me and also today my closest friends and they taught me you can do this another way and I was like, okay, exactly. this is why I felt the way I do. And today feels more right than ever to just uh, follow whatever yeah. feels right. I agree. And just let the the feelings flow, whatever you feel. Hundred percent. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. Right, but uh, back to the music, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love DJing also. Mm, yeah. One of the most fun things. Uh, but 
you don't only DJ and, and make music. You also have a regular, regular yeah, job. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been an engineer for uh, for you know this equal amount of time. I would say almost. Okay. What, what type of engineer? So I'm a computer and electronics engineer. So that's what I do. That's my profession. Uh, Which I'll, I already know, but I had to ask for the people out there watching. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> no, but I mean, so that's that's what I do um, uh, outside of the music world. And, you know, I, I've always managed to combine, uh, combine these two things and uh, try to, f uh, you know, um, get inspiration from both of them. Mm. Um, I think it's been really, yeah, it's worked for me, but uh, obviously, it takes a lot of time um, and sometimes I don't have enough time to be in the studio as much as I would like to be uh, and you know sometimes I'm not uh, you know my best at, at my, my uh, regular job either but most of the time I would say you know these two things give each other energy being an engineer working with fantastically you know bright people like, it's super fun I mean my colleagues are some of the smartest people I, I actually know and it, it's just so much fun to work with them uh, that gives me a lot of energy and, and I take that energy with me into into the studio or, or on, when I'm playing somewhere um, and the same goes back, right? I, if I've had a fantastic uh, gig somewhere where where I'm coming with this full energy, uh, that feeds into my work uh, as well. It's so, like it charges you. Yeah. Yeah, I completely understand that. That's why I think like it's good right now that we all have like this little break. Mm -hmm. You know, with all the restrictions and all the stuff happening, no parties and stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's when we get back to actually doing it and when the clubs reopen again. I think both the people on the dance floor mm -hmm. and the people, you know, playing and stuff and putting the parties together, I think it's going to be a, like a, I don't even have a word for it, like a <laughs> renaissance or yeah, like yeah. some kind of explosion or something right. like that. Right, right. Because we've had this stored up in us for so long mm -hmm. and in some ways we value it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's the contrast. Like when you work at your job, it's like, oh yeah, you're behind a table, you're doing this yeah. and you're doing that. And then when you go out into a club, it's like a bunch of flashing lights and all the rest of these yeah. things. I think that contrast is important. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, uh, w what do you think? Like, w when when the scene opens up again, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, like, what's the energy going to be like? Well, me personally, that's why I'm helping. I'm, that's why I'm doing the show because mm. I want to kind of help to lay like some sort of foundation for the vibe that we're mm. going to be on mm. when we start back up again. Mm. I think with all the stuff that happened with with a year and the fact that we couldn't do anything for a long time. I think to get rid of some of those things that were starting to seep into the culture mm. that weren't really necessary. Right. You know, like guys going around, you know, basically forcing themselves yeah. and their stuff on people. Right. And just the harassment from the women, but oh, not from the women, the harassment of the women and yeah. such things. And just like, yeah, I don't want to go on and on, but just, I want to just, I'm hoping that when things restart, it'll mm. be more. We'll be more a bit more conscious about what we're doing, right? On right. every level. Yeah. 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 That sounds. Uh, let's hope so. I mean, uh, yeah, it sounds good. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping for. Yeah. I'm gonna try to do as much as I can to kind of mm. push things in that direction. Right. Because I mean, this thing was special for me when I first came to Stockholm. Mm. Yeah. Did you feel like that? Did you feel that that feeling of community or you know this? vibe of togetherness when you first came into the scene or was it just people partying no a hundred percent i mean that was exactly what i was you know a lot of the the attraction for me was exactly that that oh my god i found this world where people are into music they're they're uh you know interesting to me they're they're I, I especially when i was you know turned 18 19 and i could go out to regular you know bars and clubs and stuff and, and you know the difference for me was like what is this? People come here, get drunk, try to, you know, pick up each, pick other. Up each other and, and, and there's like the whole, it didn't make any sense to me, but uh, comparing that to, to uh, you know, the world of, of music and dancing and, and just, you know, the importance of that and just, uh, you know, I, the, the community was super important to me, yeah. of course. I mean, that was uh, in many ways what led me into being curious about writing music or taking it more seriously. Uh, to to just you know feeling of eh, this is this is a world I, I definitely can and want to be uh, part of. 
All right. Yeah. But I, I know that you've been traveling like all over the world and stuff mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. playing at different gigs. Can you talk about some of the some of the places you've been and like like some of the memorable occasions that you had? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I don't know, uh, we, like where. Like, where? All right, if, let's start. Let's say like this. What was your favorite place to play at ever? I mean, obviously, uh, Bergen will always have a specific place. Uh, I mean, I think like when you're uh, when you're doing music, electronic music like this, it, it's going to be a place that you know that's the Bembley Arena of techno, right? That's that's a gig. The, the, the cathedral. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so so that that I mean, especially like the the first time, but you no, know, every time it has been special in its own way. I think it's just an amazing place. Uh, really, the the energy there is unbelievable the room is just fantastic and uh, i mean that that's a memory i think you can probably uh, like most djs i know the most uh, friends uh, who who have been playing there or have played there that's a memory memorable place for them of course uh, but uh, you know other places small small uh, small gigs um, Tokyo was super fun. It was, you played Tokyo? Yeah, that was super yeah. fun. I mean, just uh, so cool to meet people from a different culture like that, and it was super cool. Um, yeah, I mean, what's the vibe like there? Uh, I mean, I, I I don't feel that I I know enough okay. to 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 really be able to to explain what the vibe is. <laughs> uh, to, to be honest, oh. I mean, it was fantastic to be there and play, uh, but I, I I know too little. We'll have of, to track down some Japanese techno. That would be cool. Yeah. That's why now we're here. The the pictures are in the background. I mean, for one, the name. Wow, what a name <laughs> for a, a cafe full of DJs and music. That is, who came up with the name? Uh, do you know about? Do you know about? Want to know the the uh, origin? Give <laughs> <laughs> it to me. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. We want to know the truth. Oh uh, yeah, it yeah. Was, uh, I had. Uh, we were we were thinking in weeks and weeks and weeks of what name we wanted to put on the, on the place but um, then we were home at Ola's place and um, um, the night before I, I came home to Ola quite drunk <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> and, and I, I made a DJ set mm -hmm. uh, that I thought was brilliant uh, of course, in middle of night. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> drunk, uh, drunk. I think I know what's coming. <laughs> 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 and I listened to it the other day, yeah. and Ola listens to it as well, and he wrote Svai on it. Ah. I was like, yeah. you know, uh, Svaiing through my, yeah. my, my set. Yeah. And then Andreas came by and he picked it up and said, Svai. This is the name. <laughs> oh, so you so, guys were in the I process. Think that's, uh, um, I mean, that's drunk. Uh, that's the story behind it. Mm. But also, I think everyone have has a personal swipe mm. uh, when they're DJing. Mm. For me, me for example, is um, sometimes I'm too restless. I'm putting in the records too fast, so you can hear me. Uh, putting down or rushing know, it, rushing it. Uh, yeah, pitching, not waiting for those cue points. I'm pitching yeah. it a little bit. Uh, so I think, uh, I mean, when you play on vinyl, you definitely have a personal story. So mm. and that was was people did mm. uh, at 2002. Most of the DJs played vinyl. Mm. Yes. So so I is <laughs> yes, my your, your my, swing, my, your uh, Ola, uh, your contribution. Uh, you mean? Okay. My contribution yeah. and and Andreas uh, 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 interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like. Oh, I wasn't trying to think of a name, yeah, but, but yeah, sure. I brought it down as well, mm. so I think we're part of it all. all okay, three. fantastic, because mm. it was a brilliant place to be. Mm. Uh, if you could just, if it you could just, uh. great to manage it. Yeah. Uh, it was great fun, um, but also hard work. If you can uh, explain to everyone that wasn't there, that hadn't been part of it, what was the general concept of the place? The concept of the place was uh, like a free zone, maybe from like it. No, more like a, like a living room. Like DJs. a living room for DJs, um, basically, um, where you can come, have a coffee, listen to your favorite DJ, or you can play yourself. You can um, was a, uh, DJing in a in a relaxed uh, environment um, with a good sound system. We put a lot of, of thoughts in the sound system. When we start to write about what happened. Uh, in the 2000, we start with a quote of Abiba. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should read it. Yeah, please mm -hmm. do that. 
Docklan stängdes och alla som inte var äkta rymdsämlare flockades runt lögnerna kring studieplan. Eh, åren gick och barnen blev vuxna, fick rösträtt och en dag satt de framför tv-apparaterna och började minnas tillbaka till ungdomen. Men vänta lite nu, vad minns, vad då minnas tillbaka? Jag har levt i vår rejbubbla sedan 91. Jag vet inget annat, jag minns brytraves, skogsraves, warehouse raves, hemma hos raves. Jag minns Age of Love-festerna, Love Parade, Ibiza på 90-talet, The End, Tresor, Lollipop, Manpower-festerna. Hur jag var för ung för att komma in på äh, Trittna Ha, men det löste sig på Le Garage. Jag minns Monday Bar när det var en måndagsklubb på Downtown. Feed Your Head på Turbin, de dansande gangst gangstrarna på Gildas och tiden med fokus och de korrumperande dörrvakterna på GK. Låt oss minnas skivaffärerna Cream, Space Records, Karen Rhythm, Surface, Elements och Pitch Records och Fraktal, Kungadömen som Saturn Return och Spiral Tracks. Jag minns Industry 13, korvfabriken och festerna på den omtalade medlemsklubben Underground Kult i somras. Med allt det här och mycket mer i bagaget och med humör på bästa shine är jag en stolt fanbärare av vårt, av vårt underground kulturarv. Fantastiskt.